to the extraordinary claims of Madonna to be a woman who can rise higher than women have risen before the country is in the world is entirely corrupted uh, by cross-gender politicians it's very rare to have a female like Miss Merkel who's in a position to change anything from the top of the tree but if you are popular and you are spirited it can be ever so different okay I'm going to take you back to my website and take you back to the roles of the New World Order musicians that have been picked to screw the world and to lead it along on a leash like she had around her neck in that earlier image. Okay, so the only place you can get the real news of what is happening in the world is if it is an investigative reporter who is not paid by the world's owners in other words amateurs academics who have lost their jobs because of their decency uh, and their capacity to profile what is happening to the world's children and the roles of the media and the new world order bands and musicians that are picked to become popular and to become iconic but to be just trivial okay that takes us back to where we were in video one of the two that I'm making on these themes on the front page of my website uh, and we're only about halfway down it as we got to the end of the battery life in that last video we made there we're showing the training of uh, world leaders in Tavistock, in the Brookings, uh, in the mind control centres at St. Petersburg uh, in Russia. There is also a St. Petersburg in America, I'm led to believe. The links to popular culture and the identification of war crimes jokes in the form of Mr. Bean were covered in the earlier video and we had gotten just down below the Chipping Norton set and their dominance of the world by manipulating people in the Murdoch families Lizzie Murdoch's in the Chipping Norton set the Freud families are married into that dynasty the Rothschilds do not appear but they appear in popular culture as manipulators of the Vatican, funders for the Vatican funding stream, fascism and all of the Christianity frauds are explained in movies in popular culture and we've talked about the Godfather and its parallels with the fudging of war crimes inquests by bringing in body doubles who take the fall like the fictitious Jesus who died to salvage all of the sins of the world through all of these ruthless ruthless jokes and that's the South American junta leaders who were tank commanders but were given confession by the papacy in its current form uh, and were given communion by Pope, Pope Francis when he was uh, Oh, God, Jalou, I forget his, his name before he changed it for the second time and took on the Pope's role but there he is pictured giving communion to General Videla in the genocidal South American regimes and we've talked about the links of those regimes to the currency in that country which is the peso and the links of the peso to the peso family who are the fraudsters who wrote the whole story uh, and passed it on through the Roman emperors to the ordinary citizens of the world in genocidal missions and in genocidal programs to get rid of the Jewish revolutionaries when they were no longer required their numbers were reduced from 8 million to 3 million in just a few 
hundred years after the launch of Christianity and many of the Jews and their martyrs were actually crucified and that is laughed at in the Spartacus film joke where the Spartacus man is allowed to fight to the death with another rebel and they only have about half a dozen people guarding them in a circle of elite friends who if they had been turned on by the very good fighting slaves would have been dead in the ditch really really quickly but that is not the ending that Hollywood, Hollywood would ever want to portray because Hollywood is Zionist Hollywood that is there to keep the elite power base in the elite buildings of the Vatican, the palaces and the Rothschilds mansions that own the world entirely and their equivalents in the Chipping Norton region. Okay, so there's again the GG joke. The GG is the horse, it's the hippos, it's the swimming circle of hippos. The GG is the Governor General and she is the joker that says that Anzac die with a good sense of humour for their country and then the elites sell the poppy fund to them. Douglas Haig did it first. Uh, the uh, Queen's husband Phil the Greek did it for a long time and the joke that we finished on when the batteries ran out was that Jesus on Palm Sunday is actually the donkey same in the David, David Copperfield film as the do donkeys travel along the cliff top in front of the of the uh, uh, the relatives of David Copperfield before David Copperfield's family group are launched into the globalised empire out of Michael Grade's epicentre near Ipswich in the Folkestone region. Everything that is in popular culture is a joke at religion or political manipulation or the brutalisation of innocence or even the brutalisation of our biggest religious martyr who never actually existed. That's the Piso story. I've linked it this morning to the name of the Nile. The name of the Nile in recent versions of the Bible is the Kush. It's no longer the Pison for shame and because of the links to the Garden of Eden joke which was perpetrated as recently as the 1960s. When a farmer tries to encourage a cow or a sheep to move along in front of the crook, as it were, that's the crook in an innocent term, meaning a stick used by a shepherd, they use the word kush, kush, which is actually the word nail, or originally the word pisson derived entirely from the Piso authors who planted the Garden of Eden in Aden and then for shame have to pull out of that story and have explained to you the Beatles yeah 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 Yemen joke that the Garden of Eden and Aden has now become the yeah yeah Yemen okay that took us to the Beatles bands and the launch of the shameful launch of the Rolling Stones with the full footage of Agent Orange and carpet bombing of an innocent South Pacific country. The whole of the Pacific Rim has been held to ransom by the G8 countries in all of the time when the only fraud that is reported from the government buildings was perpetrated by President Nixon as electoral fraud in the Watergate building. That is why the media are owned by the world owners, so that everything they do 
including, including the brutalization of naked children in those regions yet with their skin peeling off their bodies right in front of the camera as the rolling stones launch their joke about the religious resurrection and the stone being rolled away which was the topic of how do you make it believable in the Jehovah's Hall this morning yeah everybody believes that everything that they read that was written by their superiors and their slave masters who are filthy rich and are the only people to be able to read and write for centuries they have been abused by them and they still are being abused by them they believe that God will do the whole job on their behalf and he may do they may do I have no idea how many gods there are but I do know how evil has consumed the human condition which is why I attend three or four churches every Sunday so I can get an objective perspective on the mind control mechanisms that are ruthlessly deployed and if needs be they are also deployed in the pursuit of justice by the appointment of twisted inquest chairs by the people who give the gun licenses to notorious paedophilic killers by the people who give knighthoods to people like Savile who are grooming kids with the royal children and the royal parent in the form of Prince Philip the paedophile deviant who was kicked out of the Queen's bedroom after the second year of their marriage when only two kids were born but they are not being pushed forward to be legitimate claimants to the throne because of the changes in the laws of succession that make only Prince Charles's children eligible for that uh, the whole thing is massive and entirely corrupted there's Archbishop O'Brien with Savile and a couple of kids the cadet schools like Dunblane are for orphans to be abused and what I started off video one with was the identification that the Mercers are the city and guilds that make silk stockings and haberdashery in London since the 13th century and they are run in St Paul's school which is run by Prince Charles's financial advisor Christopher Chambers with huge business interests in lawless money laundering Nazi gold Switzerland and with links to the time switch joke that means that Jesus who was never born who took 70 to 80 years to be written about by the Pisos that is the TARDIS joke that is launched in popular culture further down my web page we introduce the world to Abelard Reuchlin that's the guy here with the baldy head in a new version of Madonna's Girls Like Me meaning that she is exceptional there is a picture of a gorgon like baldy head that she is holding in her hand as she is uniformed up as a American football player as if she's holding the ball in one hand remember that Madonna is an iconic name for the virgin mother of the non-existent Jesus if you find Abelard Reuchlin you'll find the five videos that have been cited from those hyperlinks and you'll find the linkages to the writing of the King Arthur stories by the papacy in Rome and I'll, I'm led to believe that there are equivalent stories portraying chivalry and knighthood bearing people as the rulers of their countries that are ruling in a democratic way from round tables where every decision is openly discussed and aired with the populace and if there's an objection to it then you can contest it in the form of a duel with very limited bloodshed 
and the decision making is done by might and by committee yeah all of it is written by the popes in Rome and imposed on the monarchies that are in league with the popes in Rome in keeping the suppressed people suppressed and in controlling the minds of the masses at the Colosseum or at Chelsea Football Club depending in which era you're intent on trying to understand the human condition okay here at the lower aspects of the web page which is the introduction to all of these massive crimes against the world's people none of it gets mentioned at all in any of the world's free press except the Watergate scandal on electoral fraud by a genocidal president who is Nixon assisted in the killing of millions of people by Henry Kissinger he like the European Union becomes a Peace Prize winner in the dim and distant future that is rendered hopeless for millions of people and refugees all around the world because of the leader's greed and capacity to rule things chaotically so there we've got a directory registration for Nathaniel Charles Jacob Rothschild uh, and his interlocks to the Hermitage Development Trust which is in Russia the Institute for Jewish Policy Research which is globalized the Future of Russia Foundation Henry Kissinger is on that uh, and then you've got the British Sky Broadcasting Group PLC the Prince of Wales's Charitable Foundation which has links to the Prince, Prince's Trust and has links to the local editor of the Southern Reporter in the volunteer to be a slave on behalf of your people in your region and to sell their jobs to the world's owners so that nobody can get the really important news out about what is happening in the Bank of England that is no longer owned by England or its governments but by the private individuals that we are talking about all over the front page of my website there's two generations of Murdochs there's Rebecca Brooks the criminal who gets acquitted of everything she's accused of there's Prince Charles who got 700,000 pay rise for the Cor Cornish estates alone same year that he gets 70 year immunity from publication of any of his discussions with the press or with Britain's puppet politicians okay there's the guys that negotiate the corrupted contracts that's that one there still in power still in the government with Cameron who's been selling weapons to the Republic of South Africa since he was age 24 under Mrs Thatcher's regime who welcomes fascists and Jewish policy analysts anywhere they're prepared to come and steal from the taxpaying citizens that's the Russian taxpaying citizens property but it no longer belongs to the Russians like the whole of China everything has been sequestered by the intelligence agencies that's the CIA MI6 and Mossad where Kissinger is America's highest ranking agent and the world's biggest killer he's also on the board of the Future of Russia Foundation with these greedy bastards there is no other word for them they are the people that commission the Levison inquest into their own activities and remunerate each other for the suffering that they have imposed on the free world the only news that the world gets of the fraud is of what they give to each other in the corrupted inquest run by a Levison goer who's a relative of the Sutherland bloodlines that sent the colonists to the colonies for stealing bread and have an estate called Merton 
which is the name of Oxford's biggest uh, and richest college okay there's our NATO leaders including Prince Charles uh, Prince Philip and General Sir Mike Jackson and all of the scandals about Michael Jackson the pop singer and all of the jokes about that pop singer taking over Fulham Football Club years after he had been killed by persecution and by drug addiction in the anesthesia sector where I just happened to be a researcher and for moral reasons I have resigned from several journals because of the complicity of the medical sector in the crimes of the world leaders and their capacity to cover up major terrorist events the acts of God take out the rest of them yeah uh, and they know now that God is on our side because of the things that have happened to Lord Patton the student sector thief head of the BBC and head of some of these organisations fronted up by Christopher Chambers so that's the man that runs in league with the skulls and the people in America that run the secret societies and the Masonic organisations that are subservient to the royals and the prime ministers eh, and they just steal from the world's people there's the time shift joke involving the Daleks and the 79 to 80 years that it took to defraud the first few chapters of the New Testament and when that was released in Naples in 79 AD Vesuvius exploded onto the Villa Papyri okay the BBC is led immediately after the war by Zionist leaders like Eric Maswich who's a spy and a censor during World War II and then launches all of the jokes about uh, about Teddy Roosevelt and throwing his Teddy throwing his toys out of the pram and the cots and the Andy Pandy genocide jokes where the people that are in the BBC Children Light Entertainment Hour are entertained with jokes about genocides and the forthcoming Lubavitcher movement that has consumed the White House eh, and has consumed several countries within the G8 power base who meet entirely as secret societies so that they can plan the sinking of ships, the sinking of twin towers by detonated explosions that turn the victims to rubble and to ashes but the princess royals that's Fergie's little red doll survives intact throughout the whole terror event and is eventually placed in an iconic museum to commemorate the triumph that allowed those world leaders then to move in 2001 against the Islamic terror threat launched against the already dead uh, leader of the Islamic uh, terror movement that is Bin Laden he died of kidney failure in Islamabad uh, and could not possibly be involved in terror beyond that event but the demonization of the Islamic religions which are just as false as Christianity which is proven and completely researched and the background research is entirely cited throughout the whole of this website it's scholarly work because I'm a professor of neuroscience the frauds are simple and easy to understand uh, and the crimes against the people are what are going to bring them down and their capacity to laugh at those crimes against the people in Hollywood, Hollywood culture that's war horse where the horse gets the accolade as the war hero and the humans get buried in shallow graves as people linked to the Fleming family continue to make speeches the Fleming family live out the whole of their greedy lives 
in the tax havens, but manipulating the future of other countries like Ukraine and Syria from their pinstripe suits in their elite offices in the West End of London. Uh, okay, you've got the other people who get defamed as part of their teams. Because Putin is fit and competent, he is able actually to work as a spy, and this is him pictured in New Zealand, where he was gifted New Zealand for his role as a Mossad agent when he was working in Southland down there, in league with Helen Clark, the former Labour Socialist Prime Minister. So you have a communist and a Labour Socialist who are in charge of fascist organisations and intel organisations to completely remove the sovereignty of the countries which they eventually become leaders of. Have you got the picture? <laughs> yeah, and here are people operating on that scale in the UK. That's Tiny Rowlands interned in a Nazi camp until the middle of World War II when he was released to go down and run the Lonro Cabal in South Africa. And the Lonro Cabal is still the Lonmin Cabal that kills the blacks in the pay rounds with automatic weapons, just like Amristrar, when we were still the head of the empire upon which the sun would never set. There's the Rothschilds and the world's biggest killer all lined up in their profiteering committee rooms. That's them after negotiating the B-Sky B, B contract, Nathan Rothschild and I think that is Linda Rothschild. Kofi Annan is married to the angel of death who is also a Rothschild. Can you see how it works? Their relatives, close relatives and cousins of the Hitlers and of Stalin, their inbred, their syphilitic, they introduce syphilis to the European monarchies that are hopelessly incompetent uh, and are ruthlessly culled if they step out of line and contest anything with the moneylenders. There's the five arrows that set out from Frankfurt where the European Central Bank is now relocated, massive Babylonian buildings, the whole of the issuance of democratic funding on every country in the globe now since they took over in Libya uh, and they took over in Cuba uh, is entirely privatised and in the hands of genocidal people who are prepared to kill their citizens and keep them in poverty and to keep their newspapers filled only with trivia or people with their tits out on page three so that they can have the masses controlled and entertained. Okay, there's Terry Clark, one of the, a murderer who was convicted and sent to jail on the Isle of Wight. He was allowed to escape and was set free and was allowed to go back and become a repeat offender in the narcotics sector by the British Royals who used him as a laundering tool. That's Peter Williams QC, who was the funder for the IRA in the Southern Hemisphere for three decades, funded the killing of Airy Neve and Lord Mountbatten for things that impinged upon the heroin trafficking campaigns that Prince Philip insisted in running in league with Churchill Aristotle Anassis and the other sires of the Queen's babies, that is Lord Porchester and Lord Plunkett from the south of England. All of this is described in multiple websites on my web page and multiple pages on my web page and all of the motives for the disappearing planes and the cover ups for the illegitimacy of the monarchy involving Chip and Norton involving RAF Bryce Norton and the Whitney Conservatives where Cameron is the boss. It is a ruthless cabal and it's very close to Winston Churchill's 
gift from the grateful nation for all of his mercenary genocides across the centuries since the Orange Wars and the religious strife that was brought in entirely as a master plan and is entirely exposed as a trivial set of fictitious writings that were completed only in the 1960s when the Garden of Eden became the Yemen joke okay and when you look at who scanned the Google Maps images of the Garden of Eden to show that Aden has still got a BP plant there if you look with high resolution it was scanned by an American agency called NOAA that is NOAA isn't that funny yeah <laughs> there's Clark and a man called Hastio who's a vicious killer in the, U in the New Zealand police force and is able to keep the innocents on the streets running the narcotics to let the murderers back into his country and to get involved in affairs within the judiciary and with the likes of Peter Williams QC if they get involved and they steal from their country on this scale then they get cancers or they get cardiovascular accidents like Lord Patton Peter Williams QC has the same cancer up his urinary tract as Billy Connolly, the working man who drank at the Clutha Club. Uh, it is a series of sick jokes that are about to be ended. Okay, uh, that's Switch is the woman that got involved in the protection of the murderers and the drug runners in New Zealand, which could be an innocent little country but were it not for its ancient rulers in the monarchy who were not allowed to talk about or publish anything that they say to the press that's the first child of Charles and Camilla that is Simon Day he's a telecom engineer in Australia and those are his jet black children that were photographed with Princess Diana and she said there are too many people in this marriage which is why her father-in-law Phil the Greek who's an enemy of Britain's sovereignty and has asset stripped the whole of our energy provision and closed down all of the nuclear plants like Gerard, Gerard Schroeder the fascist did in Germany all along the Baltic coastline so that they could launch the privatization of Gazprom which has 44 subsidiaries to the west of Amsterdam all of them are massive Ponzi schemes and financial crimes against the investors and the public who consume their product uh, and the jail colleagues who stand in the way of the contracts that's Miss Timoshenko in Ukraine they jail her largely as a sideshow from their crimes and the imposition of enforced wars in Ukraine where the US Navy is posted up in huge numbers in the Zapastopol uh, Navy bases that have been brutalized by these countries since the Crimean Wars in the Crimean Wars we took the soldiers and the navy people out in ships but we sank the ships in Sebastopol harbour because we knew that none of the combatants would be going home alive yeah that is why we launched the balaclava hat and the act of God is always the closing act in the brutal human wars that are imposed by this greedy condition that we are victims of relentlessly for 2000 plus years there are the terrorists that were the head of the UN trade delegation and the head of the little red doll, doll joke and the children's charities on the 101st floor that's why the Fergies and the Fergusons appear in the news they're still in the news 
like the missing planes that are used in the narcotics methods it's as simple as that the countries that miss the planes are protecting their biggest criminals who are actually the world's owners that own the Vatican that own the acclamation of who's going to be the next Pope that owns the ownership of the Archbishop of Canterbury's role who is also an oil executive and the son of uh, Prince uh, of Winston Churchill's private secretary and a Labour politician yeah that's Justin Welby a colleague of mine who actually steals from sub-Saharan Africa before he gets the big job as the uh, Archbishop of Canterbury and when I came to Canterbury in 2006 for a job interview they had a force 5 quake in that town <laughs> yeah there is the man who runs the poppy fund there is the man that runs the triumvirate that kills his cousins Mountbatten if they try and muscle in on the action and take over the trading of the cocaine in the Phillips light tubes his name is Philip do you get it? the Phillips light tubes are made in Holland by his distant cousins and fascist friends who are the Dutch monarchies since they abdicated he's had a heart attack and they walk only with the aid of sticks in both hands okay there's the missing plane the sonar boys that could detect the drugs that he was dropping and there's Plunkett Porchester yeah the fathers of the Queen's babies that are depicted below that's Prince Edward and that is the Prince Andrew that was the head of the trade delegation when we exploded the Twin Towers so that we could sweep into Iraq and Afghanistan and launch the little red joke that was used in the Schindler's List film and is perpetually a laugh at the brutalization of innocent countries and terror victims by national leaders okay there's the parents and the ownership of the narcotic stash the governor generals in all of the Commonwealth countries are more power powerful than any elected officer. Baron Patrick Plunkett, Eddie's dad. Yeah, the likenesses are amazing. And it goes on into the next generation. Princess Diana's children, some of them were sired by the Dutch royals. And there are the other generation of the... That is the Dutch royals that were in charge when Holland was flooded as a result of those narcotics operations and that one there with the white flower and the broad smile was openly acclaimed as a Nazi supporter at the beginning of World War II okay there's the instrumentation that was deployed to find the narcotics stashes to empty the Phillips light tubes and to send the cardboard boxes back empty as a receipt that there was something to be paid for and the funds from that funded the IRA and the carnage in the religious sectarian sector all over Ireland for all of the time after the war and right up to the present day they've had a couple of financial crashes if you have sectarian violence involving General Sir Mike Jackson in those countries it's quite easy to cover it up and when you're in a position to solve it as they were with the Chinook experts they just kill and assassinate the experts who are in a position to restore Ireland to socio-economic welfare and to remove the brutality and the sectarian violence that follows the false religion around all around the world everywhere that it is launched as a divide and conquer tool to keep the masses controlled okay that's a little bit more about the details provided on Greg Hallett's 
absolutely explicit and deeply researched websites these were images were shown as his interviews with various people around the world in various continents including Denmark including Fetzer's programs in the USA uh, and including his own website and the people that come and interview him there uh, and his publicity for his books which include dozens of dozens of PDFs that I have been relaunching but otherwise are being written out of the public eye okay and here we have the little suits that Prince Philip used to groom children for paedophilic sex in Australasia on his visits there there's the sonar boys and the Sunderland float planes that were used to locate the narcotic stashes and there's where the sonar boys were dropped totally professional operation Prince Philip is the head of the British Navy for at least three decades he runs the poppy fund with Butcher Haig and the whole thing is a stitch up and a joke against Britain's war dead and its military deployment and we said a little player, prayer for innocent children who work in the British militias even today at church this morning they have no idea what they are fighting for and if they know, knew the truth then the world leaders would be war criminals and they would be banged up for the rest of their days if they were not executed see the joke about Martin Borman and the prosecution of his body double uh, in the war crimes hearings as Bormann was laundered out of Germany with Hitler through the uh, Lake Mugglesey region and into safe havens in Latin America or in Hitler's case in Montserrat in the Pyrenees uh, near Barcelona okay and there's Prince Philip who entered the country with a tenor in his pocket he was in a box of oranges when he was exported from Greece as a claimant for HRH's heart eh, and the marital status that means that he is able to asset strip everything that Britain should rightly own and to sell it off to private interests ok, uh, there's the engagement of the king and queen there's the tour to New Zealand when they fell out and they separated in the marital bedroom yeah, uh, and we're getting now down towards the bottom of the page here's another fraud the execution of the Russian Tsars has been pointed at and to be accountable by the Rothschild family that's Andrew Carrington Hitchcock's work uh, and this is the Future of Russia Foundation you can see Lord Nathaniel Charles Jacob Rothschild Timothy William Osborne that's the Osbornes that are the current Chancellors Ambassador Arthur Adair Hartman Dr Henry Alfred Kissinger the world's biggest killer and a peace Nobel Peace Prize laureate ok there's the two usual suspects from the Rothschild family that run the show from the background but actually own the whole world since they took over the Bank of England in 1918-15 yeah in that pump and dump exercise that is portrayed with all of the uh, gentile funding streams in contention for the massive loans to bankrupt entire countries and even continents in that case it was to be the biggest loan that was issued to the whole of Europe and Rothschild used it to sequester the Bank of England and it has been theirs ever since ok uh, there's some of the shenanigans involving Operation Winnie the Pooh the double agents and the profiteers in war times there's Prime Minister Quisling of Norway there's the people in Norway who still kill the socialist kids at rallies even in the last five years then you've got Desmond Mortum the man from Uncle Joke the yellow submarine that was used to get Hitler out of the Mugglesey region and into Barcelona 
and you've got the jokes about Quisling, his nickname is actually Gimli. You've got the jokes about Hitler's nest and Otto Route 999 that leads to there, and that is the call number for the whole of the Commonwealth Police Force for all of the time since the genocidal war was ended. There's Nixon pretending that he's only involved in electoral fraud when he sets up the narcotics pathways that get rid of Marseille as one of the leading epicenters for narcotics fraud and takes it across into Latin America and then eventually into North America through Nevada and through uh, Cuba. Yeah, that is mentioned in the, the whole of it is profiled in the Great Opium Coup by Henry Kruger and none of it is reported by any free press in any of the G8 countries. Not even the Hitler story and the fine details of who helped him, who the Brits were, John Ainsworth Davis, Ian Fleming, Winston Churchill, Desmond Morton, General Ismay, yeah, Patricia Faulkner, all of it. The Saunders woman that helped them, the operatives from Cambridge University and Oxford University that were trained to kill and deceive as double agents in war. They live in the ha tax havens now and they brutalise the world by stealth. Okay, and there are some of their parties involving Sarah Ferguson, Princess Diana before she was killed by her family friends, Beatrice and Eugenie, Kate Middleton, Prince Harry, Royal Ravers all partying with Richard Branson on the tax havens in Necker with the Tweedsmuirs and with the envoy to the Middle East, Tony Blair. The leaders of the institutions in the West, including Jimmy Wales of Wikipedia, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Mary Robinson, the infidelitous uh, mistress of a teenager when her husband was the Prime Minister of Ireland and Ireland's economy was being crashed for the second time in a decade by hockey and by his friends in the Olympics and World Cup commissioning sector. I forget the name of the prominent sweaty guy that is a colleague of Princess Anne's uh, but he was very much involved in the crashing of the Irish economy and all of the football commissioning frauds. That's the Tweedsmuir's relatives from the Peebles area that wrote the 39 Steps novels and you've got somewhere in those images pictures of Princess Margaret who loved to have sex with two black men at the same time regardless of their port of entry that is really really funny and that is the reason why we have the launch of the people who have become Snowdens and spies that have been released into Russia but are never ever pictured with Putin in Russia uh, and are alleged to have sold all of American secrets to the Russians similar allegations about Germans and spying Gerard Depardieu escapes to Russia as a tax exile and he escapes as an exile and finds a haven in a massive communist country which is just a story that the media tell you okay there's the tenant who was appointed to the Doctor Who joke who's a relative of the Tweedsmuirs and there's Sean Connery the tax exile who's a friend of David Murray the vineyard owner and the ranger's thief. There's Princess Margaret again with a Caucasian friend of her with a fancy hat. Okay, there are some of her suitors in her more legitimate days when she was still attending the GGs at race courses all around Britain. And there's Fleming who looks spookily like the man from Australia who helped the king with his speech problems before they announced that we were going into a second massive world war. Okay, Royal Navy Commander Ian Fleming, 1908 to 1964. 
the man is a traitor and a profiteer and his family are littered with profiteers and I've got all of their director numbers all the methods that are being used to steal from the treasuries are portrayed in books that are over a decade old now the heads of the IMF in those days were people that were trained in Chicago uh, and that is Milton Friedman Nobel Laureate for Economics <laughs> and there we have the actors and the comedians like the Hayden Guests and John Cleese and the fish called Wanda joke that is a massive laugh at the Christianity fraud which is 2000 years old all of those people have got baronets, baronets titles and are tucked away in the house of lords as super elites but choose to live in the tax havens abroad including Sean Connery okay and all of the films that he's made about pursuit of justice all around the world are just a sham okay here's some of the cover ups for the illegitimacy of the monarchy but their capacity to be ruthless as soon as the queen is appointed to office her husband kills tigers in these images in India with the dead tiger which is massive lying dead at their feet and you've got King Juan Carlos who sires some of uh, Princess Diana's illegitimate children who are now claimants to the throne uh, and he gets away with killing elephants and rare buffaloes now in the panic that Princess Anne finds herself in when her legitimacy is totally exposed as a fraud for 130 years uh, she begins to condone the eating of horse burgers yeah, and her nephews who are the legitimate and in inverted commas claimants to those thrones are quite happy to support her in all of those cover ups here's the evidence that she was involved in the bringing down of the twin towers that Prince Andrew was the head of the British trade delegation for a full decade after that scandalous event Mike Tyndall was brought into the marriage with Queen, uh, Princess Anne's uh, family her daughter was married to Mike Tyndall because of the involvement of the Tyndall Air Base in the US and the Canadian Air Force bringing down of those twin towers the methods are completely immaterial to me it was mass murder and Greg Hallett has explained how always the mass murders that are world wars lead to more mass murders that are more terrorist events that lead to ethnic hatred that lead to more world wars that's all that they can do as world leaders all that they can do is to kill and maim and dismember their countries there's a little joke about Schindler's List on Kristallnacht and the woman in the little red coat surviving like Fergie's doll in the rubble of 9-11 isn't that funny the Rothschilds involvement is with the red hexagram which when they partition Palestine becomes the blue hexagram for Israel and in 2012 the power base for the world passes from America the Empire State on to Netanyahu in Israel with the massive support of Kissinger one of the world's most feared men who trained President Barroso to be the boss at the EU in Georgetown University in America it is completely shameless there's the Barclays fraudster the Barclays joke is a religious joke about bearing fruit and agrarian fruits in growing operations in the holy lands uh, and that <laughs> the whole thing is a vicious vicious joke the whole of the banking empire is there to steal from the people and to create massive sovereign debt pools every country in the world now is in debt to mysterious creditors and the creditors 
are prime ministers and heads of the central banks who come from different countries to the central bank that they run. That's Mark Carney. Uh, here's some of the assassinations of world leaders. A Garfield was assassinated because he tried to take democracy back into American hands and the funding in democracy. That's why we launched the Garfield cartoon comedy jokes. Uh, Kermit Rockefeller is a similar joke. Uh, the Bush dynasty get involved in rewriting the Christian Bible. They become Lubavitchers. There you see George Bush with the Talmud. They become conflated with conflict uh, because of their ties to religion uh, and the use of condoms and to the depopulation exercises around the Golden Triangle where they run the narcotics and in all of the regions where they run the world wars and British American tobacco profits from everything that they do. Okay, uh, there's the Unison scandal there's the carryings on at Grangemouth where Ineos is a joke about the inscription on Jesus' cross. There's David Laws asset stripping the treasury, launching the student loan scam, using Vince Cable and Michael Moore MP as the responsible thieves for the government in the student loan scam because they, like him, are from the Lib Dems and they pledged pre-election that they would never impose fees on British students. Okay, the Unison boss is the boss at the Bank of England, the court of the Bank of England, and all of the energy companies that are robbing every family across the UK blind are European conglomerates that involve the neutral countries that were Spain and Portugal, and the salaries that their CEOs earn as professors at Edinburgh University, at Southampton University, where all of the criminals are now former Intel leaders or forming bank banking executives or former pharma executives. They are given now honorary uh, professorships and their salaries are right up there in the 10 million euros region and the bills for every energy consumer all across Europe are rising at more than 20% every year as the government statistician who's a fraudster from Israel uh, called Klaus Moser uh, as he declares that inflation is running at somewhere under 2% that's 20% product rises for all of the energy sector products and all of them are involved in massive frauds and Ponzi schemes uh, and when you talk to the people that collect the uh, the meter reading statistics and collect the money on behalf of the monarchies and these massive criminals John Major is a director at Centrica uh, the the um, Lord Patton's wife is a director at Marks and Spencers and some of the energy companies. The man who was the head of the Rhodes Foundation, who was the head of Auckland University when I was down there and came for a few traumatic years to be the head of the Oxford Russia Fund uh, and to be the head of Oxford University before Lord Patton became thief supreme there, all of them are on the take and all of them are very proud of what they are doing in selling what was created in Scotland or in the UK in the 1960s by your mum and dad. All of it is simple, easy to run, but has now been sold by the nation as a continuation of Prince Philip's uh, campaign to get rid of all of our sovereignties. That is Glynis Breakwell, the boss at Bath University, where they have a pharmaceutical profiteering department. They have excellent links with the thieves in Latin America. She gets 342000 for her day job 
at the university and she's a non-executive director at dozens of companies like all of the Russell Group leaders and what she got for free all the way to professor her students are now having to pay £50,000 for the four years honours degree that's £50,000 toxic debt for every student who enters the UK system now which is what gobsmacked Jim Fetzer before he stopped me talking about the religious fraud which is even more grandiose uh, and there's Vince Cable the owner and the business secretary who runs the student loans company as the official manager for government Michael Moore has been removed for obvious reasons because of the potency of my revelations against his crimes against the people okay we're getting near the bottom now that's the Cairn frauds some of the other directors at the Bank of England are from virtual products companies like Cairn they have no energy product at all all they sell is coupons and what religion sells is a save your soul in return for your cash project there's the acronym NOAA N-O-A-A -A. that is NOAA the man that was involved in the biblical flood that is the scanning tool that Google Maps create, use to create that map there's Masrib there's Sana the Santa Claus joke the European saint is Santa yeah it's as simple as that the Taze Russell joke is the village of Taze and along here you have a place called Attack and it is under Attack you have an estuary in that river and it is all a sick joke about Aidan still being the host for the BP plant all of the research is done by scholarly Jews a lot of the bigger research that I've mentioned earlier and on the website citations was done by Abelard Reuchlin from north by northwest up in Kent on the west coast of America and his business headquarters has now been taken over by the, as the business headquarters for the T-Mobile company and the T-joke is the Christian cross joke it cannot get more cynical than this when St Peter denied Jesus three times the cock crowed three times they laugh at that still when Roman soldiers laid siege to a city they used a technique called loaves and fishes they would bake bread with fecal matter mixed into it and amputate the penises of captured citizens of the city and throw the loaves and fishes over the besieged city's walls it's well known that Roman slang for the word penis was fish it is no coincidence that Jesus performs the miracle of the loaves and fishes and it is a cruel Roman joke so Catholics get to eat fish on a Friday and in America that has become the hot dog joke with the sausage in the hot dog being the penis with mustard on it isn't that funny hot dog as they pat each other on the back and have a laugh at what is an inner circle joke for 2000 years ok then there's the corruption of ordinary little countries like Scotland uh, the role of the Dunblane school in the grooming of kids with Savile and O'Brien involved none of them get brought to justice he gets persecuted beyond the grave which is quite typical of how people like him behave yet they lead their lives as criminals and deviants there's Lord Mackay of Clash Firm that was Mrs Thatcher's second pick to be law enforcer, enforcer supreme in Scotland and that launches the porridge joke Mrs Thatcher's first pick for the head of Scottish law enforcement was a poof called Nicholas Fairburn who's in charge of religious charities eh, and beats his wife senseless <laughs> yeah 
and all of them who are party to this in any shape or form become knights of the order of Malta, knights of the realm and we've heard in recent videos how the knighthood gets you right to sex in the UK in the royal brothel which is the basis for the fuck word fuck stands for fornication under condoned by the king <laughs> uh, and it is absolutely ruthless and all of that goes on right up to 1914 and the Dunblane massacre happens way after that but Michael Moore and Prince Charles and all of their knights are immune from prosecution or even a token investigation of where they live now since the children were buried in shallow graves near to Sandringham or near to the hospital where some of my children were born where he groomed the kids very near okay this is now into the weapons trading scams UBS is very closely related to the advisor to Prince Charles who's the boss who's the chairman at Lonro Still that's Christopher Chambers the head of the girls school which is also a massive part of the Mercers organisation that have oaths in their families that they will die for the country as long as the corrupted country thrives in all wars and in all crooked deals that they engage in yeah Christopher Chambers is also the head of that girls school in North London uh, and I send my emails to them they never reply okay the UBS bank underwrote the supply of nuclear warheads provided by John Bredenkamp and his company and this was what got lost in the Gibraltar border control scandal fully two years ago now and this is me proclaiming that to Prime Minister Cameron and the need for him to meet with Her Royal Highness which they did within a few weeks of my letters all of the interactions between HRH and the cabinet in that inaugural meeting were portrayed on the telly okay and I wrote to the Queen at the same time telling her how the country was being undermined by financial services fraud but she, her aides wrote back saying sorry but we cannot interfere constitutionally with our own government's crimes okay that says see letters to Prime Minister Cameron the desperate need for honesty honour and truth in politics and how to get us out of war and the weapons trading that's Thatcher there pictured with Cameron who was a sales boy in her team as they started to purchase the bread and camp weapons from nuclear free South Africa that's nuclear free in inverted commas ok that's me at the bottom of my web page uh, and I'm finishing off there with another attack on my political representative Michael Moore John Lamont is just as bad John Lamont knows all about the secrets of the Trident nuclear weapons scandals and if you look for the Trident nuclear weapons scandals in my index you'll find that all of that has been reported to Scottish police already to the Scottish Justice Ministers and his deputy uh, the former Scottish Justice Ministers have all resigned in shame because we have revealed that Trident 3 and Trident 4 are run out of Eccleston Square in London and all of it is covered up perpetually by all of the media I'm going to end off now with the theme tune for the Washington Post movie uh, about the electoral fraud that consumed Nixon which is the only thing that they talk about in a context of international political skullduggery when all wars that we have permanently with us in all of the news media are there to perpetrate the evil 
and the hatred for other countries and their citizens. Uh, so let's just find, we started with an inspiring woman, potentially called Madonna, which is itself a joke at the Virgin Mary's expense. <laughs> yeah, She has the capacity for greatness and she knows it, but I suspect that she fears what happened to Marilyn Monroe and Princess Grace of Monaco. Yeah, if they try and do the decent thing like Princess Di did, then they die young. Uh, and what we're looking for now is So the Washington Post is a film made uh, by Robert Redford and when you look at the films that that man makes and he stars in, you can see how cynical it is. He's Butch Duck Cassidy and the Sundance Kid stealing and robbing banks all over America, taking the loot out into Mexico and adjacent countries and uh, Robert Redford helps to solve the crime that is the electoral fraud in the Watergate building. I've been to the Watergate building. It's right next door to a then Walmart's supermarket and it's quite stunningly small and nondescript like the story that emerged from it. Okay, I think I found something on the concluding scenes and the massive fraud that is the electoral fraud in the Washington scandal. Yeah, when I talked to Fetzer recently about the 2000 year old religious fraud and the jokes about the war dead, he would not let me talk about any of those things that we'd agreed to talk about for three weeks before I picked up the Skypey terminal and I started to talk to him. Instead, all he wanted to tell me was that America was screwed by the CIA's capacity to interfere even now with America's own elections. The frauds and the crimes against the world's people are huge and only by listening to investigative amateurs can you find the truth out about those massive crimes and I'm hoping that Madonna is a special woman and that she will have the courage even although she was born and raised in the windy city of Chicago like Milton Friedman <laughs> and the bootleggers uh, like Al Pacino uh, not Al Pacino, uh, I forget the name of the man who was in the Untouchables movie uh, and was the notable mobster from Chicago uh, and all they got him for was tax evasion that is the smallest of the UK and G8 politicians' crimes. They are money launderers par excellence because they've been doing it for two world wars back to back and all of the time in between they're in other people's countries taking from them what is rightly theirs. Right then, let's see if we can find... Uh, Watergate film theme music it's all the president's men uh, and all the jokes that are in it are shared by the actors uh, the actors actually play the roles in Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid in the Mrs. Robinson movie. Uh, you've got the actors who are involved in the frauds and the sexual affairs. Everything uses the same people. Robert Redford makes movies about colonial Africa in the Out of Africa movie and all of the weapon scams that go down there, taken there by the Thatchers and Sir Mark Thatcher, 
whose inquest has never been published. Everything that the world believes is a lie perpetrated by the world's owners and everything that the worshippers believe about Jesus Christ and all of the messianic religions that have followed from that so that they can be divisive and can divide and rule the world by tyranny and religious persecution. It never ends, but I'm going to end it. And Jim Fetzer just needs to keep letting the truth out in little, little, honest segments. And the world can be free and democratically funded for every government initiative across the world. And the criminals that are now the governments across the world will be jailed as national traitors. <sighs> okay? It's complex, but it is much simpler than understanding the human brain and its pathology. Uh, and all the presidents, men, trailer. So we could show you the trailer to show you how it's portrayed as a heroic investigation by two people who are prepared to behave like the pre free press should. Okay, I may well run out of batteries, but this is, you know, the magnitude of the crimes that they are shielding in the free press now are unforgivable. Uh, and all of the affected nations are in a sovereign debt crisis. Everybody could be prosperous and happy and live happily with their neighbours, as was written on the ancient tablets of stone. Uh, eight Academy Awards, isn't that, isn't that rewarding activity to pretend that you're onto something really serious? And when Schindler's List gets it, and the War Horse gets it, Is there a cover-up? 